What attracted you to this event? Um, actually, there are some really good looking chicks that uh, <laughs> wrangle me into this. Right. And I just wanted to find an alternative way of uh, getting some exercise. Can you do a Viking call for us? Oh! Well, that Viking call is sure to get the blood boiling in some of the men's leaders. Here at mile 57, all of the elite skaters are together. Chris Kaiser leads the tour, picking up the pace just a touch, testing the field. Smart thing to do here to see who has the legs to keep pace. In our talk with Chris Kaiser yesterday, he told us it pays off to keep a close eye on your opponent. And I like to look at the faces of the guys who are next to me. And uh, you can really tell a lot just by looking right in the eye and, uh, and seeing, you know, if you push a little bit harder, how does his face look, you know? And, and for me, I try to disguise the pain that I'm, I'm suffering. Uh, Matsker's notorious for it, you know, he smiles during the hills and he's hurting just as much as the next guy, but it's a big psychological part. Brian McKay perhaps saw something in the eyes of his Peloton partners that told him now is the good time to get away. The field seems unfazed by the man in the green Mountain Dew uniform, but McKay is determined to make a go of it. McKay is another of the many fine skaters from Northern California. He lives in Sausalito and trains with Chris Kaiser. He finished in the top 10 at the New York City 100K recently. In just a short amount of time, Brian has a pretty good lead on the field. As the peloton lazily rounds a corner, they realize that any man with three career wins, as McKay owns, may have a shot at getting too far away, especially with the many hills and turns on this part of the course. As a group, they decide something needs to be done. Led by California's Eddie Matzker, they're off. But the initial charge proves fruitless. I don't want to have to do it alone, Dan. Come on. Please help somebody. Help does come from Matzker's teammate, Scott Baldwin. Yes, yeah, Scotty. That's what I like to see. Up ahead, Brian McKay has given up his adventures at the front. His push, though, sent a scare through his competitors. But on this skate, McKay did not have the legs to carry the day. Eddie Matzker's teammate chased down that last threat. Matzker now is in good position to win his fifth Athens to Atlanta. If he didn't use himself up, skating away from the field in the first hour. From the fastest skaters at the front of the pack, let's go back a few counties to hook up with some of the four-wheeled skaters. Are we there yet? Checkpoint one. Checkpoint one. You're doing Thank great. you. Athens to Atlantis checkpoints are where skaters refuel with solids and, more importantly, water. For skaters and non-skaters alike, our muscle mass is 75% water, so adequate hydration allows for greater endurance, quicker muscle recovery, and improved performance. Water is what makes every cell in your body work, from your brain to your muscle to every organ. It's the most crucial nutrient or food supplement that we can think of, and it's the most underutilized. In this event, skaters will consume 6,500 bottles of water. Drink up. Well, the easiest way to gauge how much water you have to take, especially when you're doing endurance exercising, is the taste in your mouth. If you've got a dry, pasty mouth, if your lips feel very chapped or dry, then as a general rule, you're probably a little bit dehydrated. We recommend people to take eight eight-ounce glasses of water a day, and if they're going to be exercising, especially exercising hard, to take that much more fluids on top of it. If you're good about replacing water, drinking water during the day, and especially before, during, and after exercise, your body will function better, your muscles will function better, your brain will function better, and you'll have a much better time when you're out on your skates. The lead pack is approaching the 70-mile mark, and when they get there, they'll find themselves at the top of Silver Hill. This is a steep drop, almost one mile long, and speeds have been recorded upwards of 50 miles per hour. We've got the fastest and the steepest part of this course when we return to our 1998 coverage of Athens to Atlanta. 